So here's our data that we got from our titration readings. So uh, the first equivalence point um, was 20.40 mils. Remember, we took the average of the first derivative uh, and the second derivative values. And then in our duplicate sample, we got a, an equivalence point value of 18.44. This is an average of D1, which was 18.42, and D2, which is 18.46 milliliters. So taking the average, we'll get 18.44. So from this data, we got two samples here. We will calculate the concentration of acetic acid in our vinegar sample from this titration data. So first off, um, I will measure the concentration of the acetic acid in vinegar from sample one. So here is our equation that tells us what's happening. Remember the NaOH, remember the NaOH was our titrant that went into the burette and the acetic acid was in our flask. Remember we took five mils of the vinegar, 50 mils of water, and the um, two drops of the indicator. It changed color once it reached the equivalence point. So we're going to start off with determining the concentration of this in sample one. Sample one, we calculated an equivalence point about 20.40 milliliters. That reacted with five milliliters of the vinegar. So we want to figure out how much acetic acid was in that five milliliters of vinegar. We, did, we determined that by calculating the concentration so how much of this reacted with 24.40 milliliters of sodium hydroxide? Concentration of this sodium hydroxide is 0.25. This is the procedure. We'll calculate sample one first. So we started out with 20.40 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Okay, so let's go ahead and convert that to liters because big M is moles over liters. So there's 1,000 milliliters in one liter times the concentration of this NaOH was 0.25 molar, which is moles per liter. So it's going to be 0.25 moles over a liter. That's NaOH times. Uh, now, what's the ratio here? Now, this equation was given to us in the table, uh, in our lab protocol. Uh, what's the ratio between the number of moles of acetic acid reacting with the number of moles of NaOH? You'll see that this equation is balanced, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So for every one mole of NaOH, I'm going to put it at the bottom to get my units to cancel out. For every one mole of NaOH, we have one mole of acetic acid, whose chemical formula is HC2H3O2. So notice here, uh, we get our units to cancel out. The milliliters and milliliters cancel. The liters, liters cancel. The moles of NaOH cancel out with the moles of NaOH. And when that happens, you are left with the moles of acetic acid. Now doing that on my calculator, I'm getting an answer of 0 0.0051 moles of this acetic acid. So don't forget to put in your units. C2H3O2. Okay, there's an H here as well. So this many moles, based on our balanced chemical equation, reacted with 24.04 mils of the 0.25 concentration sodium hydroxide. So this many moles. So remember, the units of molarity are moles per liter. So we have here, let's write this again, 0.051 moles of this acetic acid. Okay, divided by moles over a liter. Well, it reacted with five milliliters of the vinegar. So let's go ahead and convert that to liters because the customary units of molarity are moles per liter. So five milliliters, I'll go ahead and convert that to liters by dividing it by a thousand. And in doing so, you have 0 0.005 liters. Moles over liters is big M. So doing this on my calculator, I'm getting an answer of about 1.02 molar as the concentration. So let's go ahead and fill that out here for our sample one estimated concentration. Let's go ahead and do our second run trial where we had an equivalence point measured of 18.44 milliliters. We'll get that concentration using the exact same methodology. Average those, and that will be the uh, molarity of the acetic acid. By the way, um, the molarity of our NaOH solution, uh, this was given to us in the bottle. Uh, that's something you want to write down immediately when you come to the lab. It's 0.25 molarity, 0.25 molar. All right, now let's go ahead and do the sample two 
uh, calculation for our estimated concentration of acetic acid in that five milliliters of vinegar. So sample two, if you remember, was 18.44 milliliters. That's what we measured out. And we're going to do the exact same thing that we did before. Okay? We're going to follow this exact same protocol. The concentration of the sodium hydroxide is 0.25 moles over liters. Moles over liters is big M. And like before, according to our equation, we have a one-to-one -one ratio. So that, so that for every one mole of acetic acid, whose chemical formula is HC2H3O2, we have one mole of sodium hydroxide. Uh, excuse me, for every one mole of acetic acid, um, for every one mole of sodium hydroxide, we have one mole of acetic acid. So like before, the moles of NaOH cancels out with the moles of NaOH. The liters and liters cancel. The mils, mils cancel. We are left with moles of acetic acid. On my calculator, that's 0 0.00461 moles of acetic acid with the 18.44 milliliters of the 0.25 concentration sodium hydroxide. Let's figure out the concentration that reacted. This many moles reacted at the equivalence point. So like before, it's five mils that went into our titration of acetic acid. So we have 0 0.00461 moles of the acetic acid. And five milliliters is the same thing as 0 0.005 liters. Moles over liters is big M. And on my calculator, it's 0.922 big M. OK, so big M means moles over liter. That is the units that you want to put in uh, when you do uh, your problem or any problem like this. Concentration units, one of them is moles over liter molarity. So we'll fill that out here as 0.922 big M. We'll average those. Uh, so adding these and dividing it by 2, getting an average of about 0 0.9971 moles over a liter. So that is the work through on how you do the post-lab analysis in getting the concentration of acetic acid. So these are my values. These are my volumes. Uh, you can use your volumes to determine your concentrations. So one final thing I do want to mention is this idea of the mass percentage of the acetic acid in vinegar. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, the important thing to realize here is the density of vinegar. It's about one gram per milliliter. Using that, we can figure out the mass percentage. So what is mass percentage? Okay, it's part over whole, which is a percent. So it's the mass of the acetic acid over the mass of the vinegar. So how much acetic acid is in that vinegar? All right, so using this concentration that we got, the concentration of the acetic acid in the vinegar, and using our density, which is one gram per mil, we will figure out the mass percentage, how much of that vinegar contains in percentage acetic acid, this chemical. So let's go ahead and do this. Using, I'm going to use the average that we calculated, which is 0 0.971 moles of acetic acid. Um, I'll just go ahead and write acetic acid. I will not write the formula here. So moles of acetic acid over a liter. All right, so we know that for every one mole of acetic acid, uh, the molecular weight, so here I think I will write the formula of acetic acid. It is HC2H3O2. So figuring out the atomic weights or the molecular weight of this substance, you'll add one hydrogen plus two carbons plus three hydrogens plus two oxygens together, getting those values from the periodic table. Hydrogen is about 1.01, .01, carbon is about 2.12.01, uh, excuse me, multiplying that by two. Hydrogen again is 1.01, .01, uh, multiplying it by three. And oxygen is about 16.01, multiplying that by two. So adding all those numbers together, uh, we get about 60.08 grams of acetic acid. And here we'll use, now here we'll use the density. So they tell us the density. The assumption is the density is one gram per mil. So that's a crucial assumption to make to give us the mass percentage. So we know the density of acetic acid is one gram of acetic acid goes into one mil. Remember, density is mass over volume. And um, everything should cancel out. Um, for every 1,000 milliliters, there's one liter. So notice I don't have any units here uh, because percentages don't have units. Okay, part over whole, uh, part over whole, the units will cancel out. You multiply it by 100 to get a percentage. So no units, which is what we would expect. 
So the moles and moles of acetic acid cancel. Remember, we got this from the averages of our titration data. The grams of acetic acid cancel out with the grams of acetic acid. Remember, this is the density that was given to us. And the mills, mills cancel, the liters, liters cancel. So we don't have any units. Percentages don't have any units. And doing that on my calculator, I am getting an answer of about 0 0.005, excuse me, 0 0.0583. And to get a percentage, all we need to do is multiply it by 100. Remember, if you want to get a percentage, your ratio part over whole, multiply it by 100 will give us a percentage. So that is about 5.83%. So this is the methodology that you want to follow when you want to get the mass percentage of the certain substance in the whole thing. Here in this case, the mass percentage of acetic acid in the whole thing, the whole thing is the vinegar. So here's a question on a percent error and percent accuracy. I'd like to go over that, that with you guys. So um, in this post-lab question, it's saying that the manufacturer of this vinegar bottle tells us that it's 5% acetic acid by weight. Now, remember, we calculated our, if we go back here, we calculated our um, percent of acetic acid um, as 5.83%. Okay, that was our mass percent of acetic acid in vinegar. However, um, the manufacturer tells us it's actually 5%. So how off are we? What's the percent error? What's the percent accuracy? Uh, that's something that we're going to talk about and try to compute in part C here. Point is, it's an error. Okay, so obviously I did not get 5%. I got 5.83% from our data. We even did it twice. Um, so how off are we from the manufacturer value? So the percent error is the known value minus the observed divided by the known value. So the known value was given to us, it's 5%. So I'm just going to put the percents in. You don't have to put the percents in, you can actually convert it to a decimal. So the known is 5%, that's what um, they tell us is the manufacturer uh, label according to the problem. The observed, what we got was 5.83%. We divide that by 5%. Okay. So I liked, uh, again, this is just me. Uh, some other sources, instructors may tell you otherwise. I like to have my error as an absolute value. So that's not etched in stone, but this is just uh, my personal preference. So doing that on my calculator, I'm getting about, and taking the absolute value of it, so making it positive, getting a 16.6% .6 error. Okay, so. Well, that's uh, not the best, um, but it is our data. It's what I got. 16.6% error. What I got was 5.83 experimentally. The manufacturer got 5% based on the problem. Um, let's figure out our percent accuracy. All you need to do is take that 100%. Now, if you convert this to a decimal, it's going to be 1 minus the decimal. Since I have it in percentages, um, and 100% is considered the whole or the base, it's going to be 100% minus 16.6%. And that's about 83.4%. So I was 83.4% accurate with uh, our calculation of 5.83% of acetic acid in the vinegar, 83.4% accurate and 16.6% error.